All right. Here's the next radio we're going to uh, work on. This is a rather collectible radio. It is one of the very first Zenith radios ever made. Got the Zenith on the top and um, the label says Chicago Radio Laboratory who were the people that started Zenith. Zenith on the front. Missing all kinds of stuff. It's going to be a lot of work to get this thing going. Got a crack in the cabinet, crack over here, but I have both pieces. Got a big crack right here, but that will close up and seal okay. Alright, let's see what we got here. Alright, that's the tubes. Okay. Got some blocks of foam here that were used to hold the chassis block in place. The chassis did not have any anything holding it in place when it was shipped for, from eBay. And that's what broke the front panel. The transformer board was bolted to the front panel right there and the box got thrown around in the shipping and that uh, that took that panel and cracked it. Okay, let's pull this thing out of here. was designed to have this support bar screwed to the bottom of the box. It was not. Therefore, all of this weight was hung from the front panel and a few screws around the outside. So when, when the box got thrown and dropped, these transformers, you know, that just went up and cracked the cabinet and then um, the whole thing moved forward some and broke the corner off and broke this off. It looks like they only had three or four screws in it, so it didn't break the rest of them. There's there's few of the screws that didn't break out, but um, we're we're missing the most serious thing that we have missing is this cam. There was a cam. There was a cam. This was mounted here onto the front panel. And there was a shaft coming through here to the switch, and there was a cam that would operate these um, fingers here and connect and disconnect the different connections. And what it was used, what's used for, is it connects the output jack to the plate of the detector, first amplifier, and then the second amplifier. And that way, you could. Um, just have one jack. You didn't have the string of jacks like the, um, the like other radios. They just used a switch to where you could leave it plugged in and just switch from one to the other. Um, very nice, clever idea, but um, unfortunately, the cam that does the moving of the fingers is missing, and that is a serious disaster. Not only is the cam itself, you know, all the little cams, difficult to make, but I don't have any idea which of these uh, fingers does what. So I'm going to have to see if I can figure out somehow all this stuff goes because it's it's uh, it's it's just absolutely uh, something I've never seen before. The radio tube plate here was hung on springs. There were sets of springs here that were connected to these uh, various places, and that held that floating, you know, kind of floating in the air. 
and that of course got uh, completely bollocksed when the uh, radio got thrown in the uh, shipping. So uh, we've got all the little resistors are there. They have little resistors here that are in the filament circuit. They are all present. Grid leak is present. That's good. It's just that that cam is the one item. The um, variometer here, the coil is in there, but the shaft that goes through is missing. But the coil is there, and um, it's in good shape. And uh, all we'll have to do is um, get that back on the, uh, we'll put a shaft through there, and, and that'll be pretty straightforward to fix. But, uh, okay, the first thing to do, I'm going to measure these transformers and see if we're in luck. Okay. Good. Okay, transformer one is good. It looks like there was a third transformer. Okay, this one here, good, good. Two good transformers. We've got soldered connections and what appears to be room for a third transformer. So I'm suspecting one of the transformers is missing. Apparently this thing was banging around quite a bit and it broke some of these wires off. I, I'm thinking that this one goes to right here. Okay, and we've got one right here, and we're missing a wire to there, so I'm betting this one goes to right here. I'm betting this one goes to here, and this one here goes up to the, uh, oh, it's right there, it's right there. I don't know for sure. We'll sure as heck find out. Okay, and tomorrow I'll have to go up in the attic and find another transformer that'll fit in there. gets all those wires. Now we got one wire here. Mm. Oh yeah, I see it. All right. You can see right here we have an empty hole. It's got a clear place marked where this terminal at one time went. This was in there, like that. Okay, that goes in there like that. The thing that makes me think this thing is either a prototype or something, all of this stuff looks like it was cut with a hacksaw. You know, it's not machined or anything. It's like it's just a, it, it's all just cut out with a hacksaw. It's not 90 degree angles or anything. It's just a, just, just roughly made. Now some of it was definitely laid out by a machine. You know, the holes for the uh, tube sockets and stuff, those look like they were laid out on a, uh, a machine with an index that they could do it accurately. But, um, okay, we're going to have to get this, uh, this set of tubes held solid. Okay, we're going to get rid completely of the, uh, the spring mess. We do not need to mount them with springs. That's nonsense. Complete nonsense. Okay? I, I don't see... I see dust here. It's like either the transformer was removed a long time ago, or 
there wasn't a transformer there. But those wires definitely were soldered to those points. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to take these pieces and we're going to get them back on the front panel here. First thing we'll do, get them in position, and then we're going to epoxy a piece of um, panel on the back to hold it, to make sure it's really strong. Okay, let me get some super glue. All right, we'll let that go ahead and harden for a good half an hour or so. And um, then we're going to put a piece of, uh, piece of fiberglass on the back of there to uh, make sure it's absolutely solid. Okay, let me go find some fiberglass. Now, we've got a little bit of a problem. It turns out this has got a waiver to it. It's not... <laughs> it's been heated up in the past and had a load on it, so it wavered it. So our piece that we're going to put on the back here... Oh... Oh... If it isn't one thing, it's the other. Okay, so I'm going to have to have to grind that off. Cat. Okay, that gets us to where we have area to work. Okay, now, the problem we've got is right here. Look at that. If, if you look at it, you can see how much that thing is bent. Okay, you can see right there, if we hold this on there, flat, see how it is? It's got a bend in it. All right, let's get the heat gun, and we'll heat it up and see if we can flatten it. 100 degree dadgum day, and I'm going to use a heat gun in here, burn up all our air conditioning. I'm going to get a couple pieces of aluminum and a clamp. Because what we're going to do is warm this up to where it gets soft, and then we're going to clamp two pieces of aluminum on it to hold it flat while it hardens. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, that's going to do. I thought this was a Bakelite panel, but it's not. It's a hard rubber. I can't remake this panel because it's got the zenith and stuff on it. I'll lose these etchings if I remake the panel. You know, I could easily just get another piece of 3 16ths um, Bakelite and remake the panel, but uh, we'll lose those etchings, which would uh, be a very, very bad uh, hit to the uh, to the authenticity of the radio. All right, let's see what happens. Oh yeah, it's it's squishy. All right. 
that's nice and flat. So we'll leave it flat like that and we'll leave it for half an hour until it hardens. Okay, I took this on the belt sander and flattened, ground it out as best I could here. That flattens that out a lot better. So this is going to, oh boy, that, that is just absolutely flat on there. And that'll make the epoxy stick a lot better. Okay. I mean, you, you can't even see the crack. I mean, that's all put together. But it's all done with super glue, so the strength is not there. You know, even though it looks beautiful, there's no strength to it. If, if I grabbed it and pulled, I could break it. Now, once we get this on there, if, if the strength of this piece of um, Bakelite is going to add into it, and that'll make it to where it's virtually unbreakable. It'll hold up. We'll epoxy it, and then we'll um, clamp clamp it with this to hold it absolutely solid and let it harden. Now I'm going to roughen this up a little bit more. Okay, it, it gives it more uh, surface to stick to. It also keeps it from having a flat sheet to where a crack can just propagate. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to clean the uh, surface with some spray. This is uh, brake clean. Okay, that gets any trace of dust and, um, and, and oil off of the surface. And this dries to absolute nothingness. There's nothing, no oil or grease left. Ah! Stuck my finger in it. Technically it should be done by using a scale, but uh, JB Weld is pretty tolerant. You know, if you're within a few percent, it's okay. Now we don't have time with this. This is five minutes, so uh, it has to be used now. I have a tube of 30 minutes somewhere, but uh, we can get it done in five minutes. Damn, I hope I got enough. All right, that's going on there. Dokey. That's it. Okay. See, by clamping it with those two pieces of aluminum, that's got it absolutely flat and tight. And um, it, it's going to be absolutely solid. Okay, now we're going to set that aside and we're going to let it harden for an hour or two. Okay, we've been sitting here an hour and the, the epoxy is hard. And we're just going to go ahead and continue. That is on there. Okay, and on the front, you can't tell. You can't tell it was on there. Okay, we'll clean it up a little afterwards. Okay, now, we've got another crack right here in the panel. Okay, and we're going to do that one next. Oh, 
great. That's All right, here we got a patch of Bakelite that'll go right in there like that. Like this actually, I'll put that there. And then we'll just clamp that and let her harden. And that's going to take care of that crack. More than enough. All right, we'll let that harden, and that's going to take care of it. Okay, we've got one more little place. <clears throat> right here. Okay, this one. Okay, so we have a little pocket there, and we'll just pour the epoxy in there and let it harden. And then when we're done, we peel the tape off and it's filled. Okay, we'll let that harden for an hour, and then we'll... Um, Peel the tape off, and we've got the uh, got those cracks taken care of. All right, we've got this hardened for an hour. Now all we do is we take this uh, tape and see how that is. Uh -huh. That is just fill that in just right. Okay. Okay. Head down. If we look at that crack that's in the front, it's closed up and absolutely hard as a rock. I mean, the panel is flat, and I mean, there's no way that's going to break. Okay. We've got two holes here that are used for mounting the transformer board and one hole here, which is the panel mounting board uh, hole. Okay, good enough. It's got all of the uh, epoxied up holes. Okay. Okay, that gets all of our holes. That's got the transformer board mounted, and okay, this thing has got to be tightened down. Okay, got a lot of work done on it. Uh, front panel fixed. <clears throat> 
and we mounted all this back. All we did was put the screws in and um, get it down. Made little brackets here to hold this. So we've got the tubes mounted solidly now. We got this cam thing in. We got the transformers mounted and the back power connector mounted. Also, I traced out the entire circuit of the radio, and I'll make up a schematic of it now. I've got all of the uh, information, and um, I'll make up, get on the computer and make up a nice schematic. So, the next thing that has to be done is to make the cam. Oh boy. The way they do this is they turn the tubes on and off with these three here. Each one of these turns the filament of a tube on. So if they're only going to use the first stage, they only turn the first stage on and leave the other two off. Because back then they were running on batteries and they didn't want to run any tubes extra that they didn't have to, to save that battery, keep it from going dead quicker. Okay? So when you're running all three stages, all three of these have to be pressed. And that lights up all the tubes. Okay, and then um, as you select one, two, or three stages, then these go off accordingly. And then you've got the plate connection here, which is the these other two. These go to the plates of these two, and when they're relaxed, the transformers are connected up. And when they're pressed, then it connects the plate onto the front panel jack where you plug in your uh, headphones or your speaker. So that makes it to where you can select the plate of the first tube, the second tube, or the third tube. Okay, so we're missing knobs. They're all gone. Didn't have them. Not only are we missing the knobs, but we're missing the cam that takes those and um, activates them in the proper order. That's going to be a trick to go ahead and um, and make up. I'm going to have to take pieces of Delrin and make it and machine them out. So that's going to be a job. It goes to this switch here and it just connects the antenna to taps. This is the input circuit right here. Antenna goes to that big coil there. That's this one in the back here with the taps on it. And um, you select where on there you uh, connect your antenna. And then your main tuning coil is this one here. And it's connected directly to the tuning condenser. And that is um, where you tune. Your variable condenser uh, tunes the main station frequency. And then the regeneration is your uh, rotating coil that feeds back uh, your uh, plate circuit to get the regeneration. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward, and now we just have to make up all of these knobs. And um, I've got the mold for this one here already made. Okay, so we need a mold for this one right here. I don't have this one, so we've got to make up a mold for that. Now, what I'm going to have to have. I need a way to hold this in place. Okay. Let's take care of that. I'll be right back. Okay. What I have is a piece of board here, and I've drilled a hole in it the size, and we can adjust this to be the right height in the uh, mold compound. Okay. Now, what we have to do is this has got to be stirred up to perfection. Okay. Mm. All right, in this one. This stuff is extremely expensive. It's it's twenty dollars for each one of these. Uh, twenty bucks, twenty bucks. It's forty bucks for the set.
Okie doke. Now we're on borrowed time. We got to get this done. Once you start mixing, you don't have much time before it starts thickening up. To make sure that it goes down in all the grooves, you go ahead and use the stick to smear it on there because you want to make sure all the grooves have got uh, rubber down in them. All right, we just let that sit overnight, and tomorrow we'll be ready to cast knobs. All right, it's been sitting overnight, so let's go ahead and we'll get our mold. All right, see that's down in there. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Looks good, looks real good. get more cat food containers like this, but my cat doesn't like the food that this company makes. All right, now, as for the uh, stuff, okay, here we have the uh, urethane. Okay, now this stuff is much more critical than the uh, silicon rubber. The, um, we need to take these first, 
shake them up good to mix them. These are very thin, they're watery, so the bubbles go out of them quick. Now, well, hello there, little girl. Hello there, little kitty. We're making videos. You want to you wanna meow to somebody? Meow to everybody? Here. Here, you can meow at them. Here, look up at the camera. Meow. Come on. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Look up at the camera and say hi to everybody. Come on. Isn't she pretty? Oh, she's pretty. <laughs> All right, you want some gravy, no doubt. All right, now we're going to mix. This has got to be mixed very carefully. may have to break that. That's one of the problems with this stuff. When it hardens, it can harden onto this plastic from exposure to water and air. Ah, got it. See how that's hardened? That's from exposure to water and air. Okay, right up to the top. Okay. Okay, now, this has got to be carefully mixed. This stuff is very critical in the mixing. Got to make sure that there's no unmixed parts of it or else you're going to have trouble when it goes to harden. It won't harden. off just a little bit, the result will be rubbery instead of hard as a rock. All right, it's starting to heat up.
we're making sure we've got complete penetration into the grooves. Okay? These will take a couple hours to harden and then we'll make a couple more because I need um, I need two of these and two of those. Great. Okay, these have been hardening for a little over an hour. Got to go 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 longer. They're still soft. <clears throat> okay, they're still soft. They have to go overnight to really get hard. Okay, there we go. Nice little knobs. Those will do just perfect. Okay, been busy making knobs and stuff today for the ones that are missing. Now, the one that we really have the most trouble with is this cam action. See, these fingers have to be activated according to the front panel switch position. And um, I've got it all figured out. It took a little bit of poking around to uh, figure out what those cam positions did. It's really pretty straightforward. It, it, it has two, two position uh, contacts. So when the cam is in one position, the plates are connected to the transformer and the next stage. Now, when you put it to the outputs of that stage, it disconnects it from the transformer and connects it to the, um, to the jack for the output. So, do I have that in the... Okay. Getting burned up. Okay. So, okay, so the way it works is there, the, the, the two here are two position switches, contacts, they're like a relay but they're activated by the cam and when the, uh, when, the, when the cam is not touching the connection from the plate goes through to the uh, transformer and then to the next stage and uh, that cascades right on through until you get to the output. Okay, if you take it and turn the cam to where the output is on that particular stage it pushes the contact down so the plate goes to the to the output which is just the headphones going to be plus and that's the way they uh, they select um, you know it, it's cute but excessive um, you know just have the three jacks and be done with it like everybody else does I've got a piece of Delrin rod here and that will go in there like so and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill holes through it and we'll have uh, threaded uh, screws in there. Very, very short threaded screws, like set screws. And they will be at the correct um, protrusion so that when the cam is turned to that position, it'll push the, um, 
contact closed. Okay, so um, we'll go and get machining on it. The index slots on here in the correct position, but um, they, they're not exactly enough. Um, they work, but they need to be a little bit deeper. So I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, clamp them again and just, just put a little bit more depth onto them. All right, let's see. That gets our index uh, indentions a little bit deeper, so it'll tend to hold it in place better. Okay, now I have marked on the end here the exact place that these holes for the set screws have to go. So here for number one, we have amplifier number one and filament number one have to be active. Filament number two and filament number three we don't activate because we don't act, use those tubes looking at the first uh, uh, output. Okay? Now, so we have to clamp this in the drill press and then we drill the holes in there and tap them for the, uh, for the screws. Okay, now that gives us the positions for the set screws for each of the three. Okay, on stage three, we turn all three filaments on, and the output we do not activate. That leaves the outputs all going to the transformers. Okay, and then for number two, we turn on tube number two. Ah, ah, no. For number two, you have to turn on tube number one and number two. Woo, almost made a mistake. Almost. <laughs> hey, you gotta keep your wits about you. All right, there we go. Now we correct. So for number two, we turn on tube number one, tube number two, and we put the output to tube number um, uh, two. Okay? And then for the um, number one, we turn on tube number one, and output number one goes to the uh, next, we tap them up. Okie doke. That gives us our tapped holes. They kind of intersect there, but I don't know if that's going to matter or not. You know, one way or the other, it'll work. The, the next thing we need are some very, very small um, set screws. Let's see what I got.
Okay. Okay, and that gets us a tapped hole in there for our indexing screw. Okay, that's that. Okay, it's on here. And then we cut that off to the right length and make it work. Okay. Okay, there's our little knob. We have to cut a little cutouts on the side here. So let's see if we can put the put that cam unit in there. Okay, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to tighten these down a little bit so that they, they don't touch, and then we'll set them once we get it in there. Okay, first thing we got to do is shove this into there. That is the off position right there. thing. Okay, in the very back, you've got a little angle piece that has to go on here. See, that gets our little support in the back. Now, that goes down and a screw goes into that hole. So here, so we've got these adjusted. Okay, that's in the off position, and um, all three of these are off. These turn the filaments on, and these two are the ones for the outputs. Okay, we go to position number one. Okay, that's the first amplifier. Okay, that one there is contacting. Two and three are not, and number one is contacting. Number two is not. Okay. And then if we go to two, okay, we have one and two contacting. Three is not. And number two is contacting. And one is not. So number one will feed through the transformer to the grid of two, and then the plate of two goes to the output. And um, one and two are both lit. 
and tube number three we don't have, so it's not lit, okay? And if we go to three, all three filaments are lit. That's one, two, three are lit, and both of these are not touching. Okay? That's it. All right, we've got the last of the switches made up. We just took them and put a strap onto the back of the knob, and um, that will just go in there. Okay, and we have to put that on there with a little bit of force. Okay, now that should give us ohms reading between the antenna and the ground, okay? I will measure, of course not, of course not. Why don't I see it? That one there for sure isn't. There's where the problem is. Okay. Oh my god. There's a bunch of... Oh my gosh. I see where the problem is. Okay. <clears throat> oh. Oh, what a mess. See if you look right here. See, that one's broken off, that one's broken off, that one's broken off, that one's broken off. <laughs> All the terminals on the coil are broken off! Oh my gosh! I don't know how that happened. You know, it's clear as to why... Whoever got rid of this radio got rid of it. I mean, it had everything mechanically wrong with it. Okay. Okay. Both sides look soldered. That coil jerked. It broke all those wires off of there. All right. There. Okay. I see it. I see it. Okay, that one right there. Oh, hell, come on. <laughs> the one underneath isn't contacting either. Okay. <laughs> it 
damn thing's a piece of shit. That's not touching. Oh yeah. Okay, now. No. Not there. Ah, here it is. <laughs> Another one. Every damn one of them is fucked. There we go. Okay. Oh, 15. Okay. That's got it. Okay. So, and if I get to here, those are all contacted. All right, finally, the whole input circuit is working. Yeah. All right, we've got the power hooked onto it. it it's not working worth a darn. <laughs> oh.
All right, before we start sanding, I found one little place right here where the cabinet is cracked apart. I'm just going to go ahead and put a little glue in there and harden that up. Alright, now what we have to do is sand. There's no other places on the cabinet that are damaged. What we've got to do is more or less sand the whole cabinet. I'm going to very carefully avoid the um, decal on the top here. We want to preserve that. It's in terrible condition. However, um, having it in any condition is better than not having it, so we'll save it. Okay, we're going to make up the body for the plug. I've got it set up in an indexing head that I can rotate. <coughs> and <coughs> we've got the diameter set for 7 tenths inch, which is the diameter of the uh, hole pattern. And we got our drill bit for the size of pin that we need. Okay, and I've got it set to zero. And we shall drill holes. Okay. So now I've got to go 50 turns. Okay. All right, that's one, two, three, four, and fifty. Okay, and I need to go to point two, okay, to right there. Okay. Okay, we're just going to use, it's called Special Walnut. It's a little bit lighter uh, coating of walnut. It's, it's walnut, but it's lighter color. Okie doke. The, um, the Zenith doesn't look too bad. See, it's, it's still there. It, it's just, you know, it's missing little areas on there just from years and years of being banged around. That looks very good. Okay, I'm going to set that outside in the sun and let it harden, dry, and then we'll spray it. See how nice that looks? Okay. All right, out in the sun. It's going to get to 102 today, so uh, that'll, that'll dry it quick. Okay, making up our power wires here.
that gets us our power supply wires. It's a little bit Mickey Mouse, but it, it you know, it's not going to be used. It's not going to be used. This radio is going on a shelf, and it'll sit on a shelf for 15 years or whatever. We've let it uh, dry out in the sun for two hours, so it's completely dry now. And we're going to go ahead and spray the um, lacquer. Alright, we're ready to put it together. Try this one. Okay, there it is, there it is, boy that is gorgeous, that's gorgeous. Okay, now I've got to get a power supply and hook it up. All right, well, let's see how this thing works. Okay, we we'll turn the power on.
That's a weak one there. There it is! An old, old, old Zenith radio. All restored and working. <laughs> Very good. Alright.